you know, we have Rithik, we have Shah Rukh Khan, we have Amitabh Bachchan. I, I, I think we should say, Karina the Pooh, Karina the Pooh. Oh, because she played Pooh. She played Pooh, and, Poo, and, and it's the Karina. Winnie the Pooh, yeah. and it's Karina. Wow. Yeah. See what I did? Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid tricks. It's the Corbin. I'm wearing underwear. Hey, if only this was a Karina reaction. Oh, I'm well. save that. Okay. Karina the Pooh. Karina the Pooh. But we need to change Tubby Little Cubby the also. B-I-T-C-H. I know. And Karina the... No. That's what she says in... Yeah, but we're talking about Karina, not a character. She's like Karina we the We just Pooh. called her the Pooh. Yeah. Shut up. Then we have to go back to like really nice things about Karina. Uh, today, uh, I'll it out. Ghost. ghosts, ghost, ghost, ghosts ghost. on the water, ghost. ghost, 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 face, ghost, ghost to coast, face. I'm, I'm trying to. Why isn't it spelled G O A S T like toast? Why is it spelled G H O S T? Toast the ghost. Mm -hmm. Casper the buttery toast. Um, you believe in ghosts? No. Why not? I just don't. What about aliens? Yeah, not in the sense that people think of them here, but yeah. How do you think about them? More like us. Really? Yeah. Not green things with tentacles. No green things with tentacles. Like the way they had them in the 1950 movies? Yes. Yeah, no. Uh, probably, or even the arrival, like, probably light gray with tentacles. Like even in Arrival, you know that they was just these big ambient thing. Great movie, by the way. If you seen yes, Arrival is a great one movie. of the, probably the best sci-fi movies to come out in agreed decades. Agreed, very uh, intelligent film. Anyways, today we're we doing, doing a, a live song by uh, uh, the late Ustad uh, Nusrat Feta Ali Khan Sahab. And it's Rag Rag Durbani Alab. Is that right? What in the what just happened to the screen? Okay. Ram Darbani Alap by late Ustad Nusrat Fatih Ali Khan Sahab. This, uh, this Alap was sung by Nusrat Sahab for the film The Last Temptation of Christ. Interesting. Alongside musician Peter Gabriel. Yeah, I'll know, I know this music very, very well. Right here. This is, uh, where to? Right here. Also, this gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. <clears throat> Nusrat Sahab's voice, Sahab means sir, is phenomenal and his range is just mind blowing. Rahat Fatih Ali Khan has been trained by Nusrat Sahab since he was a child, their uncle and nephew in relation. Nusrat Sahab is from Pakistan, but he is the pride of both Pakistan and India because music doesn't have borders placed on it, and that's a form of freedom. Amen. And that being the case, Nusrat Fatih Ali Khan, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name, and many great musicians and singers like Ustad Ghulam Ali Khan Sahab and Ustad Mehdi Hassan Khan Sahab are loved across both lands. So if this is the track, from the Last Temptation of Christ that was used, uh, I you know that film very well. Mm. Yeah, I, mm. I had his, I had the soundtrack to that. Um, mm. Peter Gabriel. Yeah, Mar Peter Gabriel did the score. Yeah, and uh, Martin Scorsese directed it. Willem Dafoe played Christ. Um, did he really? I never saw that one. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting. It's not supposed to be. And Scorsese said this. It's not supposed to be a actual translation of what history and the scriptures de depict. It's an idea. And what's interesting is so many people got bent out of shape protesting it. And I remember when I went to go see it and I'm a Christian, I was like, it was like Da Vinci Code. Why are you all flipping out? Go see the movie and you realize that what he did is actually kind of a cool concept. Yeah. So people are dumb. Dumb. Here we go. Love Peter Gabriel, by the way.
so high. I wish we had a better uh, quality of video. I know, but I know these must have been a long time ago, so they probably have very few um, actual videos of him. Um, but man, was that impressive and so beautiful. And the, the fact that he was able to go as high as he was, he doesn't, like, if you just look at the man, he doesn't look like he should be able to go that high. Not at all. And then also go really low and then go back up here. Yeah. Like, uh, do you recognize the, the song? Yeah, well, I, I, it's been a long time. I That was one of those films that was one, you know, if, if a film really impacts me, I'll get the score too, because you want to just immerse yourself in the score. And that was one of them. I got the score to that film. I listened to it a lot. That, and this was a long time ago. I want to say this was probably 87, 88. And used to live, I was 18, 19 years old. And um, I was deeply, and I loved Peter Gabriel. So when I knew he was doing the score, I listened to it. And it's been many, many years since mm -hmm. I listened to it, but I, I recognize his voice. Yeah, and it he gives the the wailing, crying aspect of it with that pitch without it becoming feminized. So mm -hmm. he really could be the masculine sounding cry, cry of, yeah. of Jesus. Which one of the great things about that film is it was the first time really in cinematic history where the humanity of Jesus was depicted. And Scorsese talked about it because he's he's described in scripture and in history as being both fully God and fully man. Mm -hmm. And they always threw out history and film and often perverted it from what actual history would have shown and what the scriptures actually tell about him, like blonde haired, blue eyed, English accent, Jesus. Um, but they always focus on the deity of him. And like, he's this unreachable, infallible, uh, you know, oh, and he has an aura about him. Oh, his was the first film that really looked at the humanity and he erred way more on that side. He actually went to the place of how much of his divinity was he really conscious of and how much did he struggle with it and, and have to have faith in the mm. fact that he was the son of God. Mm. And there's a really interesting twist I'm not gonna give away that a lot of people in the Catholic Church were really angry about that I thought was actually wonderful. Um, you'd love it. Well, the Catholic you'd Church is they're kind of known for just being angry at things. Yeah, <laughs> and not being open to anything other than dogma. And it's, that's not a trait of just them. It's all religions. They have dogmatic things where they just will not give them facts. It doesn't matter. It's, mm. You know what it is? But I, while we were watching it, I was thinking to myself, isn't it amazing and wonderful and such a blessing that we live in a day where this legend, who's no longer with us, was just sitting in your living room singing. Mm. You know, we actually got to just, he was, his voice was in your house. Well, I don't think it was him. I think he's his nephew. Well, I know, but that, the guy, who, him singing. Yeah. Um, but also, what, where in the world was it taking place? The, Israel? Is it Israel? The, in, in uh, the last of of Christ? Of course. Why'd they have a Pakistani or? I know, why did they have an Indian sense? You know, you know why. For the same reason they did it in, in The Passion of the Christ. Yeah. Because you, it, there is something for the Western mind that when they hear Eastern music, even the Far East, as long as it's not definitively like a Chinese sound or a Japanese sound, but has that Middle East and then East Asian feel, that's probably why a lot conveys of, antiquity to them. It's probably why a lot of Americans think India is a Middle Eastern country. Yes. <laughs> yes, because movies have used it because to them, they're like, for the Western ear, this is the most antiquated sound we could find for you. It's just weird. They couldn't find an Israeli singer that does it. Of course they could, but it wouldn't sound as antiquated. Yes. Not that he wasn't amazing. It was just curious to me that... And the modalities. Yeah. The modalities of Eastern music, which is Israeli music, but Isra Israeli music has also been more contemporized. Mm. So a lot of the things that we have, like, you would only have, you'd have to guess at what it sounded like back then in terms of the notation as far as like the psalms and different things of that nature so i'm sure that's the mm. reason for choosing that sound but it's a great question well, he's fantastic so uh, let us know more from him and other classical singers that we should write to down below Just